So this is the stuff that's slowing our metabolism. It's making us sick. It's making us unhealthy, um, but it's also definitely not helping us in our weight loss endeavors. What's up, everybody? So if you don't know who I am, my name is Skyler Deem. I am the founder of SkyFit. We help simplify the process of fat loss so we don't do the standard calorie counting, restrictive dieting. We use a combination of high quality ingredients and fasting to see some pretty awesome results. And so if you are interested in simplifying the process of fat loss, make sure you like this video, you tap that subscribe button and you hit that bell to be notified when we release new videos. And also if you're really working on simplifying the process of getting healthy, you're struggling to lose weight, to build muscle, to stay consistent, check out the link in the description of this video. We got a free training there for you that lays out our process a little bit more in depth so you can start to understand how powerful it really is. Now today, got something a little special for you. Uh, I had a buddy who reached out to me and he sent me this Twitter thread. Now, I'm not on Twitter. I have an account, but I don't tweet or anything like that. Uh, but this thread is 12 visuals that show why 70% of Americans are overweight or obese. And I didn't look through the whole thing. I looked through a couple of them, and I was like, this is gold. And he suggested I make a video, so shout out you, Dylan. And uh, that's what I'm going to do because this is some really good content, and I do think it's important that more people see this stuff. So 12 visuals that show why 70% of Americans are overweight or obese. Number one, 10 companies control almost all of the industrial food we eat. Now, I'm going to open the image. This is pretty wild. Uh, if you look at these, this is pretty much every generic brand that I have ever seen. We've got things ranging from baby food to beauty care products, deodorant, body spray. We got cat food in there, dog food. We got snacks. We got candies. We got breakfast cereals. Um, pretty much every generic food that you see in the grocery store is controlled by 10 separate companies. Okay, now that's a lot. So, hypothetically, I'm not going to say that this is true or false or anything like that, but let's say hypothetically, one of those companies didn't have our best interest in mind. Maybe they were a little more focused on making money than actually providing us high quality food. If one of those companies had that in mind, you can just look at this graph, like look how many different products would be affected from things that we kind of know aren't as healthy, right? Candies, things like that, but then also things that we sometimes believe are healthy. Um, we got juices in there. We got some baby food, like I said. We got some uh, beauty care products. A lot of things that we could consider as, you know, not necessarily the best of the best, but still somewhat healthy, Cheerios, right? For example, PepsiCo, Cheerios is, or General Meals, that is. Cheerios is heart healthy. Heart healthy, right? Super healthy. Must be good to have first meal of the day. Hypothetically, if that wasn't the most healthy thing in the world, if General Mills didn't have our best interest in mind, could you see how maybe there's the potential that a lot of these foods could be containing things that aren't as, actually the best for us? Just hypothetically. Something to think about. Number two, 70% of our crops are genetically modified. Now, that's crazy to me. Um, so from a genetic modification standpoint, you get a lot of haters and who say, oh, it's not unhealthy. It's, there's no evidence. There's no science, anything like that. So I'll let you sit in this one. Um, I did a video on glyphosate. You guys can go check that out. That's an endotoxin. It hurts your metabolism. It hurts your hormones. It has a lot of issues with gut health. And when you make a plant that's genetically modified, you can make that plant, which if you normally sprayed it with glyphosate, it would die. You can now make that glyphosate resistant, which gives you the opportunity to spray a lot more glyphosate on that plant. So hypothetically, if 70% of the United States crops are genetically modified, that's the majority of things that you believe are healthy, fruits, vegetables, that now have this pesticide that's deeply, deeply messing with our physiology, our body, right? We open this up, we look, we see USA is about 70%, and second place, not even close, is Brazil, 37%, 38%-ish. That's crazy. That's a big difference. That's about double and from the second place. Like, we're way, way ahead of everybody else. So we'll keep going. Number three, four meat packers control 80% of all meat that we consume. They undercharge the rancher and overcharge you, the consumer. Now, as far as undercharging the rancher, um, 100%. I mean, if you look at, I just went to a local farm, which that video will be out soon, so you can subscribe to see that. Um, and it was very clear that they didn't have much support from banks. They didn't have much support from the government. And so what you experience with these four large companies is they have a large demand. If they have a large demand, their goal is to produce as much as possible. And so to produce, what do they have to do? They have to take a chicken that would normally take two years to grow to full length, or let's say nine months, and they have to pump it with antibiotics to make sure it's healthy, steroids to make sure it grows, all this other nasty stuff that takes that nine months of growth and turns it into 90 days so they can turn more food over, make more money, okay? So hypothetically, let's just, let's just stew on this. What if, what if at least one of these companies that produce 80% of all meats didn't have our best interest in mind? wasn't too worried about our health what could they potentially do you know something to think about we'll keep going number four there's an overabundance of processed foods including 47,000 products in your average grocery store 
this is just a fact. You know, the United States specifically, and I don't remember if he goes into it, and like I said, I didn't make it all the way, but there's ingredients that are illegal in other countries that are legal in the United States and that are in most generic processed foods. And so we look at studies, right? Studies have specifically shown that they took two groups of people, they set, fed them the same calories, so weight loss is calories in, calories out. So they fed them the same amount of calories, same amount of macros, proteins, carbs, fats, all that stuff. One group was fed real food, same numbers. The other group was fed processed food, same numbers. The processed food group lost half the amount of weight than the, than the group that ate real food, okay? So this is the stuff that's slowing our metabolism. It's making us sick. It's making us unhealthy, um, but it's also definitely not helping us in our weight loss endeavors. So there's that, 47,000 products. I mean, you walk around your grocery store, you'll see, like the majority besides the meat, the milk, the fruit, the vegetables, the majority of the aisles are processed foods. Even if they're labeled organic or healthy or anything like that, a lot of them has been, have been processed pretty hard. Number five. Our doctors have become legalized drug dealers and overprescribed medication rather than getting to the root cause of our illnesses. This is a fact, you know. I don't necessarily think all doctors, I don't even think most doctors are ill-intentioned. I think a lot of them do have good intentions. But when we look at it, nutrition, when you're pursuing your doctorate, nutrition is one class in the entire however many years, I think it's like eight or 10 years of education. Nutrition is one single class in one semester of schooling. And, you know, from my perspective, nutrition is a huge part of the problem. I've worked with people and reduced their diabetes, made them pre-diabetic instead of diabetic. I've worked with people who had had stomach issues, headaches, bloating, all these things that normally doctors would just prescribe things for that have been reversed with eating healthy. And so it's true, man. Like you go to a doctor, if it's not a good doctor, if it's just your generic doctor, there's a high chance that rather than ask questions and get to the root of the issue, if you're experiencing some sort of issue with your body or your mind, all they're going to want to do is put you on a pill. And again, some are good intention, but they just don't know. Some are bad intention, and they're making money. You know, they get paid for the prescriptions that they're able to write out. And so, yeah, another thing that's a little frustrating. Moving on. Six, our pharmaceutical companies control our food seed supply. Yep. So Monsanto is the company that makes glyphosate, which again, did that video on it. Um, it's pretty terrible. It's pretty terrible. Like you're getting the company that has weed killer that has been proven to cause cancer, and they are getting into our pharmaceuticals. They're getting into things that are supposed to be healing for us, but more of, you know, let's suppress this symptom while simultaneously creating more issues in the body. Okay, so again, not good. Number seven, we broke the back of our small farmer and incentivized farms to be as large as possible. Look up Earl Butts to find out more. So Earl Butts, I believe he had some role in Washington. I don't remember his exact role, but he allowed farmers to, or he incentivized them to basically use more of their land in a ineffective way. I, I forget what the actual story is here, but I mean, it says in the text, incentivize farms to be as large as possible. So we wanted to get large, large farms and large operations us usually need to cut corners when it comes to taking care of our health in order to stay profitable and to make more money. So, yep. I mean, if we went to a local farm and you got real food, the world would be a much, much healthier place, or even if you knew how to grow your own food. So, Number nine, we demonize saturated fat, which we have eaten for thousands of years and have replaced it with refined grains and sugar. Fact, um, there was a study that came out or something that came out that scientists were paid about $50,000 back in the 50s or 60s to blame, uh, it was blame fat for what sugar was doing. And that's what they did. And now look at our country. You know, we look at things, so saturated fat has gotten a bad rap, but all the studies that have bad results with saturated fats are using one type of saturated fat, whereas there's multiple. You know, red meat is incredible for you. Grass-fed butter is incredible for you. Raw milk is incredible for you. All these things that we have been taught are bad are actually incredible for our health. And it's demonized saturated fat for who knows what reason, which is basically creating an imbalance. We've got omega-3 fats, omega-6s, most standard Americans' diets with the canola oils and the grains and all that stuff, very high in omega-6, which is inflammatory, very low in omega-3, which is anti-inflammatory. So whereas it balances what we want, most Americans have this insane dis discrepancy in their omegas. So another reason, you know, lack of education, lack of information, whatever you want to call it, people are being misfed this just terrible, terrible information, taking it as fact, and a lot of people are ruining their health because of it. This one, I guess this is not 9.5. <laughs> the average American eats 130 pounds of sugar per year. That's just insane. I mean, if you do a sugar-free challenge for a week, 
look at the labels of your food and you're going to be blown away at the things that sugar is in that you would have had no idea. I'm talking hummus. I'm talking, um, I got a pesto once that had sugar in it. There's the sauces that you use. There's an insane amount of sugar. Any drinks you buy, there's most likely an insane amount of sugar, even if it's like the healthier ones, healthier, like Gatorade and all that. And so sugar is a massive, massive part of our life and it is really negatively impacting our body. And 130 pounds is insane. 1822, every five days you'd have about one can of soda worth. Uh, 2012, every five days, you're looking at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 14, 17 cans of soda, which is absolutely insane. Number 10, we have replaced natural cooking fats, ghee, tallow, butter with industrial vegetable oils made in the factory. Yep, vegetable oils, seed oils, get them out of your diet. I'm talking canola oils, soybean oils, grapeseed oils, uh, the vegetable oils, even potentially some olive oils, avocado oils can be pretty bad. But for the most part, like go with real fats. Go with the coconut oil, the ghee, the tallow, the butter. Like this is what we need to be healthy. I know it's scary. I know a lot of people haven't fed this information for so long that it just feels weird to think about eating that stuff because it feels unhealthy. I mean, I remember growing up, I thought butter was super unhealthy. Now I have probably two to four tablespoons of butter every single day. Look at me. Look at me. <laughs> but for real, like I'm not only do I look good on the outside, but I feel good internally. I have good biomarkers. I'm very, very healthy. And so we got to get out of this sense of fear of that if you eat a steak or you eat some butter, you're going to be unhealthy because it's just not true. It helps us in the long term. So get rid of seed oils, man. It's really, really gross stuff. And then 11, we think that fake plant commodities like Beyond Meat are a healthier source than pure animal protein. Amen, brother. I mean, look at this second ingredient here. We got pea protein isolate and then expelled pressed canola oil back to the seed oils. This is just a combination of a bunch of stuff made in a lab does not interact with our body in a healthy way. There's a lot of toxic stuff our body has to work through. So again, back to that toxic overload. This is not a good idea. This is not gonna make you a healthier person, not gonna make you a happier person. This is gonna make it harder for you. Harder, harder, harder. So please take this into account, man. Like don't buy the Beyond Meats. If you're gonna go vegetarian or vegan for ethical reasons, okay, but get smarter protein sources. Don't just do stuff like this, because this is awful. Number 12, you've never shaken your local farmer's hand. They are incentivized to provide us with the best quality food possible. Fact. Going in this farm, and I'm glad I did before I made this video, was super, super eye-opening. Seeing how hard they work, how they produce their food, what they actually do to slaughter it, to take it through the process, how it impacts our health, how it impacts the environment. And most people don't even know a local farm near them. Like They don't even know the name of a local farm. I mean, I grew up in New Jersey for you know, 17 years. I lived in Connecticut for probably six years. And I never knew any farms near me. I think I knew I knew one farm in New Jersey, but didn't know anything in Connecticut, had no sort of interaction with any farmers either places, didn't buy meats from there. Whereas that's the high quality food, that's the real food that's coming from the earth. So that's number 12. Um, that's all we got on this one. And when you start to add these things up and you really start to look at this, like most people think they're being healthy. I don't think that and there's there's exceptions to every rule, but but I don't think that the majority of people are going out and trying to be unhealthy. I think that it's a big mixture of people just not being educated enough to be aware, like literally not even aware of how the things that are consuming are affecting them. But then more importantly, there's just a lot of misinformation, like the food pyramid. We're taught that grains are supposed to be the biggest part of our diet. I believe grains have to be the least part. Like I really think you flip it around and you have a pretty good representation of what we should be eating. And then we look at any diet and there's all these asterisks of, you know, keto's high fat. So let's just look at the label and look at fats. Whereas if you're consuming a high fat of canola oil, you're not gonna have a good time. Or you take a diet like gluten-free, gluten can be super bad for you if it's processed, which most gluten is, but then if you're eating just for gluten-free, a lot of products can be gluten-free but have other garbage in them. So we've gotta become more aware, and that is step one, and that's something that we focus on big time in our program. It's the reason our clients think that getting healthy is actually easy, is because they have an awareness. They know what they're consuming and how it impacts their body. So again, if you are interested in learning about what we do and potentially working together, check the link in the description of this video for a free training. Other than that, just build some awareness. You know, like the biggest shift for me was starting to understand that these companies did not care about my health, about our health, and that the biggest middle finger I could give them was to take control of my health, to eat healthy, to feel incredible. So something to stew on today, something super important. I appreciate you guys. Again, like the video if I brought you value. Subscribe to the channel. Hit that bell icon. We're putting out new videos at least once a week, and they're all geared towards making you a healthier and happier person. Besides that, I appreciate you a ton. As always, make sure to eat smart, move more, sleep deep, and be grateful for this moment. I'll see you in the next video.